Game on. Hi everybody, thank you for joining me on today's edition of Glenn's Retro Show. Today I'm going to look at something that people have been asking for me for quite a long time. Here is the Arcade 1UP uh, Golden T. Now I've had this uh, for a while and since I built it, the trackball never worked uh, inside the machine. You can see here I do have my version 2 trackball here lit up in green that's kind of sitting on top of the control panel. The reason for that is the trackball in the Golden T is a larger trackball. It's not the same size used in like the centipede or the uh, 12 in one so my trackball would not be a direct replacement so it's taken a long time because there's so many other projects going on uh, down the pipeline but I uh, had some time recently and I really want to sit down and get this working so for right now I'm doing a prototyping and I 3d printed this little shell here you can see the difference between we take this my version uh, 2 trackball and you can see how different the, uh, the shape is for the uh, Golden Tee trackball. So what I wanted to do here is, we, the, the money in R&D and manufacturing and, and molding uh, to make a brand new trackball that would be a direct size replacement for the Golden Tee, honestly, I don't think the, um, there's a market enough of that to justify the thousands and tens of thousands of dollars it costs to do plastic molding. So this is a 3D print. This is a 3D print shell that will let you take now, I have two different ones. There's one for the version 2 trackball, and this is my version 3 trackball. I wanted to start with my version 3 trackball, and you can see this is kind of like, we're going to go in the video and show you how this is going to work, but this is basically going to slide inside the shell, and then the shell will mount in here. But I want to start with the version 3 trackball, because so my version 3 trackball does light up uh, like the uh, version 2, but has a light ring around it. But more importantly, there are adjustments you can do on this trackball. You can change the dot per inch, you can change all different types of things on this, uh, where my version 2 trackball is a standard trackball, there's no adjustments for how many dots per inch and rotations it, it can be done. Uh, I still will we'll do a video with a, uh, a mount, and it is a slightly different mount, uh, mostly because of the way the, uh, the light up is done in version 2 and the light up is done in version 3. In any case, today I'm just going to do a video on uh, well how this uh, 3D print uh, turned out. And this is not in PLA, this is actually done in PTEG. And PTEG is uh, supposedly strong or stronger than normal uh, plastic, injected molded plastic. Um, it's, this particular thing took over about 22 and a half hours to print. Um, so I did get a lot of sleep the other night because my printer's now in my room because my basement flooded. Um, but it looks like it turned out pretty well. So in any case, in today's episode of Glenn's Retro Show, we're gonna take a look at installing the version three GRS uh, high quality trackball in this uh, mount inside a golden tee and see if it fits and how it works. Let's get started. Okay, so here we have my version 2 trackball and you can tell the version 2 trackball honestly because of the cable coming out of the top and the ball is clear because it has LEDs behind it to light it up. This video will not be about this trackball though I will make one because I do have a, a mount designed for this. And the, but we're not going to take a look at this one today. We are going to be looking at this is the version 3 trackball, and currently this one is sold exclusively at Micro Center, one of my business partners. And you can notice right up at the top, there's like a little arrow at the top here. And if you look on the 3D print, and even on the original Arcade 1UP1, there's an arrow here. This means this is going to the towards the screen, towards the, the monitor. So when this gets put inside here, you have to make sure you're keeping this and this correct, otherwise the trackball won't work correctly. So to make it fit in here, I mean, you can see right now, technically now it would fit the trackball doesn't go all the way up it kind of sits down there so what we need to do is carefully uh, remove this top now in the version 2 you can pop this thing right off it's not a big deal uh, because the LED is lit basically from behind on this one there is a light ring on here so if you're very careful opening this because there are some wires we need to carefully unscrew here so when we pop this thing off we're just going to flip it over gently and not just and it'll rip it open and uh, otherwise you may risk uh, damaging the uh, trackball itself and we don't want to do that. But opening it up is fairly simple. You can use a, a flathead screwdriver or anything that you can get under these tabs. These little 
stop spots right here. Just need to pop this over that. So we're just going to get this thing under here, find a spot where it gets underneath. Like so. I'm just going to pop it up gently. And I'm not letting it pop up all the way because then it makes it difficult to get off on this side. So if you just pop them, flip it over, you can still get under here fairly easy. There we go. And pop everything nice and easy. There we go. Once that's done, we're going to again find where our arrow is here. So that's the top of the unit. So put this down, move this out of the way a little bit. We're going to pop this off. Hopefully it'll still... There we go. Popped. And see, I'm going to be very careful flipping it over because we have these wires here. We need to unscrew these four spots here because we're going to use the bottom part of this ball and this will kind of sit like on top of that. But we do need to remove this from here. So we just use a regular Phillips head screwdriver to uh, get them off. Okay, so we'll just get these three screws carefully undone. Okay, so again, remember that's our our up arrow this way. So we're putting it back in, there's our up arrow. So this has to go very carefully in like this. I'm just gonna screw this back down in the same spots. And just hand tight, don't wanna go too, too tight. And the ring should be in there nice and firm. And it is, let's do one last check. You don't want to go too tight and break the PCB. So you don't want it loose to where it interferes with the trackball. Okay, then we just need to take our trackball and let it slide into the unit. And now we can see the trackball is in here fine. Now what we need to do now is we need to screw these in. So we got to screw these four. I think this one here and this one here, correct? Yes. So one, two, three, four to hold the trackball in place. And then the other holes will mount into the actual arcade one unit. So I have to get a couple of screws to mount this in place. Okay, you can see I put in the four screws here, and that is to mount the uh, version 3 trackball inside this case. Now, since this is a prototype, I did have to use a couple of washers, which you can see right here. I put in two washers. One may have worked, but I did put two to give the right amount of space that the ball needs to spin nice and freely. Without those washers on there, the ball would bind up and, and not spin very well. But you can see right now with those two washers, It's spinning pretty good. Next thing to do is to put this in the uh, Arcade 1-Up uh, Golden Tee and see how it works. Okay, the next step obviously is to turn off the Golden Tee, take out the four screws and take out the control panel. Okay, we have the Arcade 1-Up Golden Tee control panel here. Um, we have these screw holes. There's only three of them here. The last one's not visible. It's only on the, the underside. But to get these in, we're going to have to take off the protective uh, acrylic. You want to be very careful. The Arcade 1-Ups are well known for you know, the artwork uh, getting ruined very easy on here. So we're going to be very careful and turn this thing over. This is where the monitor is going to be. So I'm going to flip it this way here, like so. And we can see we have one, two, three that go through, but this one is not. So that's our monitor. The arrows want to, we want to go that way with it. And we can see on the ball, it's kind of hard to see, but there's an arrow right here that we're going to make sure it goes the right way. 
it's gonna still piece off of here as well. When we flip the ball over, we still have an arrow here. Just letting you know, this is supposed to go on like this. So we'll just make sure it's lined up and we'll get one of the screws in anyway. We'll try the best we can to get the screw in, like so. And we'll screw this thing in. This should keep the, you know, the trackball held in place a little bit. All right, there we go. And that's good. Now we have to do the other three. Those are a little bit more fun because we need to, you know, do this without ruining uh, the artwork. So it's going to be a little bit of a, of a dance move here, perhaps. So I'm very careful. Push that through like so. And we'll be back in a minute once we get all the screws put together. Okay, so I have my version three trackball and the golden tee with my 3D printed uh, holder here. You can see the LED ring from the version three trackball is shining through the clear uh, PTEG uh, uh, 3D printed material that I used. I have this control panel here. This actually is a Wagner Tech Truck panel from his uh, OpenCade with just some of the buttons because the, there's a lot of features you can change on the fly uh, with this. Um, one of them is the colors. So you know, hit this little button right here. You can see the colors are going to cycle. And we also have the dots per inch. So right now, you can see by the ring what mode that it's in. So with this button here, I can change what mode or dot per inch the trackball is in. Right now, it's in the lowest settings, one light. You want the next setting, got more lights. The next setting, it goes around the ring to show you what mode and what dot per inch. The more lines, the more dot per inch it's going to be in. And that's in the full. I'll put it back to the, uh, the lowest. Now. Even though I have it fitted in here and the trackball looks nice and all that stuff, we have some stuff that's going to have to be done on the trackball itself because this is a smaller trackball compared to the large one. And I know everyone wants a large trackball, but I really don't think we have the business need to make a larger trackball for the Golden Tee. I just don't think the market's big enough to support it. But right now, the trackball as it is doesn't really function well in Golden Tee. I mean, even though I got it to fit, functionality wise, I'm going to lower the turn of volume up just for a second here. And I'll go down. Uh, I get them on the lowest mode right now. So we're going to go to one player game. The problem is that the uh, pushing effect gives a very low output. Right now I have a, uh, a wood uh, driver that's getting you know, about 250 yards. And you can see right here, no matter how hard I do it, I barely get any, any travel on the ball. So obviously this is completely useless as a replacement for the game. Now, of course, I can change the dot per inch. I'll change it to the highest mode. That's the most dots per inch, which probably will make it worse, but let's see. I'm gonna pick my drive 300 yards, and that, that was a mistake, didn't wanna do that. Let me pull it back again. See, I really don't get a lot of travel with it. My, my guess is that even though the protocols for the arcade you want to track ball is the same, the larger ball perhaps gives a more rotations for it. I don't, I'm not quite sure. But in any case, that's not gonna be worth anyone to play in Golden Tee if the trackball doesn't work. So again, this is just something uh, very early, you know, just to see if the trackball would fit and we can get it to fit and we could change the lighting effects on it. But the actual usage of it is horrible. Say what? I would never sell this as something for Golden Tea. So I really don't know how long it'll be before we offer anything for Golden Tea. Um, but right now I'm gonna say the trackball works pretty, pretty bad in there. Well, sometimes you win some and sometimes you don't. Um, I will never release the product the way this is right now. This does, this does not work well. Um, but we do it did at least prove that the version three and version two trackballs will fit in here. We have the 3D print model and to make our trackballs work in here. And you know, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And I would never release anything that doesn't work right. And in Golden Tee, I'm gonna assume the size of the ball is perhaps what's causing that, uh, that difference. And I'm not sure it's something we can compensate with. But people may say, Glenn, I don't want the small ball at all. I want the same big ball. 
And again, I just don't think it's a big enough business need. Maybe we did a Kickstarter and, and did it that way. That might work. But um, I was just trying to offer and see if this would work out of the box if people have an option in case your trackball broke. Um, but to be quite honest, if even if, if your trackball works, if it works that bad, I, would, I wouldn't want to sell it. So I guess stay tuned. I really don't know the future for Golden Tea in my trackball. Uh, leave a comment down below. You know, if there's enough interest, and we'll look at it a little more in depth. Um, is a Kickstarter the right way to go? Do a Kickstarter to make a, a larger trackball unit for here? That might be a possibility. I just don't think um, for us to just make one for this without uh, it working as it is, I, just, I really don't know. So I'm sorry guys, I can't always please everyone, but I would never release this as it is and, and try and sell it for this unit in the way that, um, in the way that works. So let's have to wait and see. I do thank you for watching this episode of Lens Retro Show. You know, sometimes you win some, sometimes you don't. But no matter what you do, what game you play, you want to play it the right way. And this right now with the GRS version 2, version 3 truck roll is not the right way. Even I can admit that. So no matter what you do, tell your family and friends that you love them. And remember, game on. But not this way. <laughs>